Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Energy News Beat Daily Stand Up. This is the weekly recap, and I'll tell you what, today is Saturday. Uh, June 1st. I hope you had an absolutely wonderful week. Michael and I have been extremely busy. The staff was just running amok with great stories. We've had some fabulous, we had uh, things going all over the place. Uh, we had Ted Cruz uh, over at the Americans for Prosperity, and we have got lots of great content coming out from that meeting as well, too. So sit back and enjoy the rest of the show. I'm going to Turn it over to the staff for the best of this week. Have a great day. Uh, the U.S. Data Center Energy Train Wreck. Oh, my goodness. Ron Miller wrote it a great article on this one. And when you sit back and think about the current data center electricity demand, globally data centers consume one to one and a half percent, one to two percent of overall energy. And this will only rise to three to four percent by 2030. Here's a little bit of a weirdness, though, on this. Uh, data centers use more electricity than entire countries. Wow. Data centers. Uh, look, I mean, that there's a chart in there from uh, Interdata and IEA. Uh, data centers can use more than Nigeria, Colombia, Argentina, Egypt, South Africa, Indonesia, or the UK. Holy smokes. That's yeah, nuts. it's it's pretty crazy when you're talking about um one to two percent of overall world energy, and then that by 2030 could be somewhere between three and four percent. And I love yeah. how we can actually throw this uh the first chart up here, data center power demand. I mean, there's a significant chunk right now that they're estimating that's going to be used for AI. It's something that um Toby Rice talked about six months ago, and he 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 got a little pushback or people were laughing at him when he was talking about that, but he was spot on considering where things are going we saw today tesla or excuse right. me i think it was a couple days ago tesla okayed their like seven billion dollar supercomputer well something's gonna have to cool that 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 could and as these things yeah. roll out more and more it clearly will become you know i mean open ai has shown you saw you can solve the ai problem by by more compute and more power so you got to do something with it well, and, and it brings up a couple of uh, the uh, the following uh, articles here. It is all related. People are now going to say it's okay to kill the uh, whales in order in, in uh, you know to not go after the environment. Uh, if you take a look at the amount of comp million uh, compute instances, four hundred terawatts are needed right now in order to do twenty twenty three. For the workload for data centers. Unbelievable statistics. I mean, it's hard to even put your numbers around that. Yeah, and they, and so, they compare the amount of, of, of usage needed for a chat GPT query and a right. Google search. It's pretty unbelievable. It's about 10 times the difference. It is. U.S. power demand surge 133 new gas plant amid new climate targets. Here's where it is absolutely horrific. And this morning, I'm going to give a shout out to Irina Slav, David Blackman, and um, uh, Tammy Nemeth, and myself. We were on the Energy Realities, and we had Tom Kirkman on, who is battling with AI and having a great time. And we talked about this. I mean, Tom Kirkman's a nut. Absolutely love that, man. And so when we talk about projected electricity use in the United States from 2022 to 2050 in terawatt hours, we're in 2022, uh, 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 we're at about uh, four terawatt hours. Uh, in uh, 4,000 4, terawatt hours. Let's not 4, 000, shortchange excuse me. it. Four, yeah, 4,000. 4, and now we're going to be at 5,178 terawatt hours in 2050. How are we going to get there and then balancing the climate goals? It's not going to happen unless we start putting in hydrogen. Oh, here's where it gets funny. They're going to start putting in this old shuffle and bake. There are the 133 uh gas plants coming online by duke energy by all these other big uh utilities 
and they have double tagged these as saying they are hydrogen ready and capable. Ah, that's, so that's how they're getting around the net zero thing. Exactly. And hydrogen is not going to work. Uh, I'm just telling you right now, I love hydrogen. It takes more energy to create. It is a smaller molecule. It is corrosive. Uh, and it goes boom. And Hindenburg is not a good brand mm-hmm. label for a car. You know, I'm going to go out on a limb. Okay. So when you take a look at how we're getting these, the utility companies are are actually playing on the uh, regulatory issues coming along. And they're saying, oh, they're hydrogen ready. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. They're I- never going to run hydrogen. They're just putting in natural gas plants. Yeah, it's uh, it's pretty uh, I mean, go, I don't blame this him. is a great follow up from the last article because it shows you if we are going to see this expansive growth of data center power, which is using more power than some countries, well, the energy to supply those data centers has got to come from somewhere and right. it's not going to come from wind. It's not going to come from solar because guess what? You want to do your chat GPT query at night. Well, guess what's not shining at the at night? The sun. Guess what's not really blowing at night? The wind. So you have this comparison of, well, where is that, quote unquote, baseload, straight line energy going to come from? That's what a data center draws. It draws a constant stream of power, whether or not you're utilizing that server farm or not. It's not like you wind down half the racks. Right. All of a sudden, there's less power. I mean, there is a little bit, but there's also just a level of power you need to keep if any of all of those servers on. So. This is a problem that people are going to have to solve. You know, we've already started seeing some moratoriums on new data center builds out because they haven't been able to find the power. You know, I mean, good for them for going to natural gas. Everybody, see, the free market always ends up at the right decision, regardless of how much hand waving goes over here. It really is a testament to our free market system that in light of all of this ESG push, people are still getting these um, uh, natural gas plants approved because it's the only way. People aren't dumb at the end of the day. No, I'm going to say some people aren't dumb at the end of the day. Vietnam shift back to coal is under EU scrutiny. Here's a tagline on it. Vietnam is moving away from green energy and back to coal to ensure factories avoid blackouts. After costly shortages in 2023, this doesn't sit well with the EU's green ambitions for the South Asian country. I got one thing to say for the EU and the United States and any of the other G7 countries putting your finger in other people's businesses. Go away. Let people put power in. This is stupid. Vietnam needs to go back to coal because it's reliable. Um, Coal-fired power plants account for one-third of the com- country's total installed power plant. In uh, data, just there recently has generated 67% uh, of the power sometimes is hit up by coal. But I think this is the worst part. So the heat, what 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 spurred all of this is this heat wave that's happening in Vietnam right now, uh, right. basically in the months of May and June of last year. Okay, led to massive power outages across the north of the country. Factories owned by some of the largest. And now I'm just going to read straight from the article. Factories owned by some of the largest tech firms, including tech giant Samsung, experienced weeks of blackout that, according to the Vietnamese government, caused one. billion in economic losses, roughly 0.3 percentage points of the GDP. That's pretty ridiculous. You can't do that. A noticeable part of your GDP is shot because the EU is trying to tell Vietnam how it should produce its energy. And and it comes in here from uh, President uh, Ursula. She says that leaked private briefing notes from the UK government officials cast doubts on the ability of Vietnam's environmental industry to influence other skeptical ministries of the green transition, according to uh, reports of Politico Europe. Here's my problem on this. Let's encourage natural gas and replace those coal power fire plants with clean burning natural gas. It's cheaper. 
you can do LNG imports, you can put in pipelines, and let's reduce. I'm all in for saving the planet. Yes, I think from Vietnam's perspective, though, they don't have the capital to go build an LNG import terminal. It and yeah. the infrastructure to build out the LNG. If if you don't have any natural gas, uh, you know, if you're not able to go drill for natural gas yourself, if you're not able to afford the capital to be able to build an LNG import facility, I mean, at some point you're you you've got to go back to coal. Exactly. Uh, let's see. Hmm. This also goes into a bigger picture, and that is, I wish the G7 would stay out of Africa. Let's go with Africa first and get people power first. Let's get people power. New microgrid to provide resilience for Houston data center and the grid. Michael, this is my prediction. This, this is the tagline on here. The microgrid will be uh, located at Via Source Solutions Via Center in Houston, a mixed use technology hub that will be home to high performance computing data center, more than 200 data labs and mission critical infrastructure. What we're witnessing right now with microgrids, AI, and the advent of this type of article coming out is you're gonna see electrification becoming um, racially motivated. And you're going to hang on. You're. I know you threw up. And you just threw up for our podcast listeners. Yeah. Michael Tanner was about to go. Stuart, I'm cutting this podcast right now. Now listen to me. Where I'm going with this is, those that have the money are going to be able to afford a microgrid. Those that can afford a microgrid will be able to survive the um, ramifications of the bad energy policies. Just like the million folks that are out of power in ERCOT in Texas today because of the storms and the electrification and the bad problems that happened there, those with microgrids will remain up. And that the disproportionately impacted communities will not have microgrids because of the costs. So anyway. Yeah, it's, I'm with you, you know, microgrids and being able to have redundant systems are going to be critical for this. You know, we talked at nauseum yesterday about data centers and how much power they're going to be using. So it, it's going to be critical. The real question is though, are we going to build it smart? You know, the, I yeah, love the, power, the, the question the, is the Goldman Sachs says the, the estimates that by 2030, the U.S. could need to add as much as 47 gigawatts of power generation just to support new data centers. Goldman Sachs never got anything wrong, so I, I'm i with you there. Well, they tried to hire you twice. Were they, say, were they wrong when they tried to hire you, or were they wrong they didn't hire you? I, was, I, was, uh, I wasn't bullish enough for them. Oh, okay. You know, um, <laughs> Was it wasn't bullish enough for them? They asked me where I thought natural gas prices were going, and I said, "Eh." Well, actually, they tried to hire me for their natural gas desk, but I was, I was, I wasn't bullish enough. Their oil desk didn't want to hire me because I wasn't bullish enough. If you remember, guys, I was, I was all over natural gas prices booming, and I just so I swung and missed at that one. So um. Germany repurposes underground gas storage for green hydrogen. Holy smokes, Batman. Germany's government approved on Wednesday a draft law to enable faster deployment of hydrogen projects and infrastructure by fast-tracking permitting and environmental checks for hydrogen production, storage, and transportation, and government, and government sources told Reuters. I'll tell you, I got one word, Hindenburg. This is not a good thing. Hydrogen and pipelines and natural gas and redoing a natural gas storage plant uh, facility in order to put in green hydrogen adds up to a lot of expense, a lot of technical corrosion, and is it going to be something that's actually even going to make a difference on the overall uh, environment? I don't think so. Germany, quote unquote, plans to spend 559 million, 550 million euros, a direct grant 
and conditional payment mechanism up to 157 billion or 1.45 billion euros to support the second corrupt steel Europe. And that's trying to make it get to use uh, instead of natural gas, uh, hydrogen. This has all the makings of another failure. My uh, trans uh, in repurposing underground gas storage for transpiring transporting and storing green hydrogen. If they pull it off, I want to be the first to admit and call up uh, egg. Edgar um, Lage, uh, in the, and he's the CEO of Ceph. I would love to go visit with him. So if I'm wrong, uh, I'd love to have him on the podcast. How big tech has helped America's new energy crisis. Uh, when we sit back and take a look, um, Big tech may be the single reason that we do not have an energy transition. I don't believe that the word transition is properly used there. Tech giants have uh, propagandized against reliable fossil fuel power plants by falsely claiming to be 100% renewable and implying everyone to do uh, could do it. Epstein continued. In fact, this is Alex Epstein. In fact, they have just paid utilities to credit them for other solar and wind to blame others for their coal and gas use. This is very much like Google. Google censors me. And they, I, I loved it when they said uh, green since 1977. And then they finally had to change it and they've changed their stories and everything else. They're not green. Um, do you know how much power they use and how much they they don't? Uh, anyway, so Apple CEO Tim Cook got bragging uh, rights. California got brownouts. Even Texas, one of the better run states of the union, has made itself over-reliant on unreliable energy sources. What a great quote in there. So uh, big tech firms have been loudly trumpeting on how green they have been quietly shopping all the while they've been shopping for nuclear power to run their data centers. Nuclear is going to be the sustainable data center in AI. Um, AI insurance companies are going to be the death of the energy transition. Either your electric vehicles won't be able to be insured or your insurance is going to go so high on your homes and because of the fires and everything else. So anyway, uh, big tech uh, insurance, you got to love it.